Benedicite, I am Mary Theresa Spagay and today I'm going to perform nebulization. And now I'm going to perform nebulization. So what is nebulization? Nebulization is a process by which medications are added to inspired air or converted into mist that is then inhaled by the patients into their respiratory system. And medication administered through inhalation are dispersed via aerosol, spray, or mist, or powder that patients inhale into their airways. Although the primary effect of inhaled um, medication is respiratory, there are likely to be systemic effects as well. A nebulizer is a medical equipment which turns liquid medication into fine mist or spray that is inhaled by the patient into their respiratory system. A nebulizer treatment may help reduce inflammation in the lungs and open airways, especially in the case of respiratory illness like asthma. And people with other respiratory diseases like uh, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and who have long-related complications from a cold or flu may also benefit from nebulizer treatment. The reason or the purpose why we perform nebulization therapy is first to administer medication directly into the respiratory tract of the patient to induce sputum expectoration in case of sputum induction. Second is to reduce the difficulty of bringing out these secretions. We should check the medication administration record against the doctor's orders. We should always compare physician orders and medication administration record. Good evening! Good evening, sir! I am Mary Teresa Spagay and I'm from St. Scholastica's College of Tampuban. I'm going to be your student nurse for today. So, I'm going to perform nebulization, which is a process by which medications are added to inspired air and converted into a mist that is then inhaled by the patient into their respiratory system. So, are you okay with that, sir? Okay. Sir, may I know your name and your date of birth? I'm Christian Sarah, September 2006. Nice to meet you, Sir Raymond. So, I'll begin by first um, performing hand hygiene. Now that I have introduced myself to the patient, explained the procedure, and asked for his consent, I have already performed hand hygiene. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the nebulizer as per manufacturer's um, instructions. Plug the nebulizer into a power source. Next is we're going to attach the tube. So attach it first into the compressor or the nebulizer and the other end must be attached to the medication chamber or the medication cup. After that is we're going to place the lid of the medication cup. So I have plugged in the nebulizer, attached the tube to the compressor, and attached the end of the tube to the medication cup. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to add in the medication into this chamber or medication chamber. Now we're going to add the medication as prescribed by pouring the medication into the nebulizer cup. So we're going to twist the top part of this medication and I'm going to pour that in the medication chamber or the medication cup. And some medications may be mixed together if there are no contradictions. And some medication may require the addition of saline per prescription for dilution. And this step ensures the proper delivery of medication. 
we must prepare the medication following the seven rights. First is the right patient, the right medication or drug, the right dose, the right route, the right time, the right reason, and the right documentation. Here we have the mouthpiece. So if the patient is unable to tolerate a mouthpiece, we should use a face mask. So I'm going to attach the face mask into the chamber. So we must ensure that the chamber is connected to the face mask. So I already added the medication into the medication cup or the medication chamber and I already attached the face mask. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, observe whether there are visible mists that are coming out of the nebulizer chamber or the medication cup. Because if there are presence of mist, it ensures that the nebulizer is working properly. So I'm going to do that by turning on the nebulizer. So as you can see, there is a presence of mist, meaning that the nebulizer is working properly. Now we're going to turn on the nebulizer and ensure that a sufficient mist is visible exiting the nebulizer chamber. Also, we must ensure that the chamber is connected to the face mask. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to position the client in a 45 degree angle or in a semi fowler's position because the semi fowler position promotes good lung expansion and medication distribution. Sir, I'm just going to position you upright a little bit. So if you could, I'll move like that. Okay, so are you comfortable with that position, sir? Okay. So now that I have positioned the client in a semi fowler's position, I'm going to move on with the next step. The next step is we're going to put the face mask on the patient. And you must ensure that the face mask fits the patient and it is placed correctly. Next is we're going to turn on the nebulizer. So we must instruct the patient to take slow, deep, inspiratory breaths and encourage a brief 2-3 to three second pause at the end of inspiration and continue with passive exhalations. And have the patient repeat this breathing pattern until medication is complete and there is no visible misting. And this process takes approximately 8 to 10 minutes. And stay with the patient until the medication is complete. Tap the nebulizer chamber occasionally at the end of the treatment. This action releases drops of medication that cling to the side of the chamber. Next is we're going to monitor the pulse rate of the patient during the treatment. Once the treatment is complete, we must turn off the compressor and disconnect the nebulizer. This promotes patient comfort and safety. Now that the treatment is complete and there are no more medications inside the uh, medication chamber or the medication cup, now we're going to turn off, of course, the nebulizer first and uh, disconnect the nebulizer from the power source. And of course, we're going to take off the tube from the nebulizer chamber and the nebulizer. If the inhaled medication contains or includes steroids, we should have the patient rinse his mouth and gargle with lukewarm water after uh, treatment because rinsing the mouth removes uh, residual medications from the mouth and the throat and helps prevent oral candidiasis related to steroid use. Sir, I, I want you to gargle this or your mouth. 
Once treatment is complete, we must encourage the patient to perform deep breathing and coughing exercises to help remove expectorate mucus. And treatments are often prescribed specifically to encourage mucus expectoration. Return the patient to a comfortable and safe position. This promotes patient comfort and safety. After the treatment, we should perform hand hygiene. Next is we're going to rinse, dry, and store the nebulizer. Attach the tube to the nebulizer or to the compressor and to the medication cup. Next is we're going to turn on the nebulizer. Doing this action removes excess or residual medication from the medication chamber. After that, we're going to rinse the medication chamber or the nebulizer cup again and allow it to air dry by placing it on a tissue paper or a towel. Next is we're going to disconnect the plastic tube from the nebulizer and there is no need to rinse or to clean the plastic tube. And we're going to set it aside. Proper care of the nebulizer reduces the transfer of microorganisms. Lastly, we're going to document the treatment as per agency policy and record and report any unusual events or findings to the appropriate healthcare provider or to the physician or the head nurse.